So welcome to College Algebra. So there was a question. How to complete the square in the case that the quadratic is not monic. Okay, so a prototype question would be something like this. So give me a, give me a positive integer that's not 1, 3, Three. x squared, and then I'll say plus. Now, I need a number that's divisible by 6. 12 is the first one that I heard. And then I need a negative integer. So negative 4. Okay, and the instruction is solve by completing the square. Okay? So more or less, so does this satisfy what you wanted? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, be, because this is an, is an equation, because this is an equation, uh, you can do it as follows. You can say, well, in the first place, I'm going to separate out those terms with x and those without. So I've separated those with, uh, with x and those without. And then all of the times that we completed the square, the quadratic in question was monic. What if it isn't in this case? So what do we do? Divide by 3. Make it monic. So if we divide the left-hand side by 3, it's x squared plus 4x. Um, and then the right-hand side would be 4 thirds. And now it proceeds exactly as it did before. So you'd add half of 4, which is 2. Square that is 4. So you'd add 4 and subtract 4, etc. So now. So I'll, I'll leave that there because we've done that a number of times. A different matter, a different matter is this. So 3x squared plus 12x minus 4. And so now the instruction is just complete the square. So this is a different matter because the way we got over the fact that this polynomial was not monic, that, that the left-hand side was not monic, is we divided both sides by 3. And that was fine, because that's a thing that you can do to equations. You can divide them by 3, and that doesn't change anything. Can we just divide by th this polynomial by 3 and just say, ah, oh, forget it, we're just going to divide by 3? I didn't want all of that polynomial anyway. Right, so, so do you observe that d dividing by 3 was a fine thing to do here, but it is not a fine thing to do here. It's not okay. So the way that you overcome this is you say, let's group together, let's group together in parentheses those terms with x. And separate out those terms without x. So now, we can't just divide by 3, but what can we do inside of the square parentheses? We can factor out a 3, right? We can say, OK, we'll factor out that 3. And then, inside of these square parentheses now, inside of the square parentheses now, we have a monic polynomial. So, so we can complete the square. Oh, I'm, I'm completely in your way, aren't I? Sorry, I was all into, into it. OK, so um, I lost my train of thought completely. <laughs> oh, we're completing the square inside of here. So we can add something and subtract the same something inside of the square parentheses. So what is it that we want to add and also subtract? Right, we'll take, we'll take 4 over 2, which is 2. We'll square that much, and then add it and subtract it. So we're going to add 4, 
and subtract 4. Now the first three terms inside the square parentheses have the virtue of themselves being a square. So what, what, what is the first three terms? X plus 2, X plus 3. Right. So it can be written as x plus 2 squared, and then we have this minus 4 is still here. So this minus 4 is that minus 4, and that minus 4 is that minus 4. Okay, and then usually at this point you distribute the 3 back in so that you obtain 3 x plus 2 squared, and then minus 12, and then minus 4. So uh, 3 times 4, distributing this 3 in. Okay, so in the case, in the case where you're completing the square and you're doing it within the context of an equation, it's enough just to divide by the leading coefficient so that you're, in a sense, forcing it to be monic. Otherwise, uh, to, get, to get it to be monic, you essentially have to, factor, have to play this game where you factor out the leading coefficient and then play the monic game inside of the parentheses and then put it back in. Other questions? What is that process called? Complete the square. This one? This? Uh -huh. Also complete the square. Uh, just, um, the, but the thing is, is that the, when we, when the technique of completing the square, we're, we always were assuming that the, that the quadratic was monic. Okay. But I gave you one that was not monic. Uh -huh. Other questions? Okay, so now let's solve some equations. Okay, so for example, um, solve x to uh, 5 over 4 is equal to 32. Okay, so in the first place, in the first place, what we need to do is we need to consider the natural domain. That is to say, we're eventually going to perform a sequence of algebraic operations, and we're going to say that x needs to be one of these. But before we even do that, before we even make our determination about what x could possibly, about what x is, we need to determine what, ex, what could x be at all, okay? So the thing that you need to recall about fractional exponents is that the notation y to m over n is actually, that's actually just notation, and it is shorthand for a specific radical expression. So what radical expression? It is the nth root of y and then raise this to the m. So what that means, what that means is when you're considering this, when you're considering this, it's saying that you must do the radical, radical first. That is to say, you have to take care of the denominator first. And then you do the exponent second, the numerator. OK. Did you have a question? No, it cannot. You must do the radical first. Okay. So now there are instances, there's instances in which you can do, you can put the m inside. That is to say you do the exponent first. Mm -hmm. 
but that depends on the parity of M and N. So would, would you please remind me someone, what is parity? Evenness, right? So what is the parity of 10? Even. What's the parity of uh, 23? Odd. Okay, so whether or not, so it is always correct to do the radical first. Mm -hmm. It is some of the time correct okay. to do the exponent first. Okay. okay, so for that reason, would someone please tell me what is the proper radical form of x with exponent 5 over 4? So what is it? It will be the fourth root of x. And then raise this to power 5. That's what that means. So this thing that we've written, the reason why we write it that way because it's easier than writing it this way. <laughs> That's the reason why. But this is what it means. Now, that being the case, now that we have, we have properly understood what this expression means, now we can make a consideration about its natural domain. What is the natural domain of this expression? Positive or zero, right? So this part of it, raising something to the fifth, you can do that to anything, right? Positive things can be raised to fifth exponent, negative things, zero things, no problem. But this, this requires that x is greater or equal to zero. Okay, that requires that x is greater than or equal to zero. But I'd like you to compare What if we had gotten to this position and we were looking at this? What is the natural domain of this? Not the same. What's the natural domain of this and why? The natural domain here is any x, any x. Okay, so what's the distinction? This is a radical, that's a radical, because oh, this one is odd, right? So this, this parity observation about, about radicals is going to be throughout the semester. So this is any x. And in the end, the reason is because this one is any x because this is an odd radical. And this is only non-negative x's because this is an even radical. OK. So we haven't even begun to perform algebraic operations on this equation. I haven't even begun. But what we have established is that when we get to the end of those algebraic operations, the only things that we can include are things that are non-negative. Anything else must be excluded. Okay, so any question about this? <clears throat> so now that we've done that, it's time to perform algebraic operations. Algebraic operations. Okay, <clears throat> so here's this equation. x to 5 over 4 is 32. The first order of business is that we need to rep represent this in radical form. And we already uh, saw above that it needs to be like this. So fifth root, or no, sorry. <sighs> Fourth root. fourth root of x to 5 is 32. 
Okay. <clears throat> so we want to get this x by itself. What's the first thing we need to do? Okay, good. But I'm going to represent it like this. I'm going to say fifth root of both sides. So fifth root of fourth root of x to 5 is <clears throat> So right now, in a sense, you might think that what you could say it like this. What we're attacking is this 5. So what we're attacking is that 5, we want to get rid of it. The way you get rid of it is you compute fifth root of both sides. Now, I have a question for you. This fifth exponent and this fifth radical, do they cancel? Yes. They do cancel. Yes. Do such radicals always cancel, radicals and exponents? Mm. Ah, <laughs> start, starting to get a little skeptical. Good, I like that. <coughs> so the answer is, is no. They do not always cancel. This 5 and this radical 1 and this radical 5, exponent 5 and radical 5, they will cancel. But it is not, it is not the case that they always cancel. In what case do they not cancel? If they're inside the radical. Not that. If they're different numbers. Okay, if they were two different numbers like, like P and Q, okay, that wouldn't work. It's not that. It's not that either. It's when they're even. Because remember, so, so let's do this in steps. So first off, the f what is the fifth root of 32? Two. Two. So I'll just do the right-hand side, and I'll leave this here unchanged. Okay. Now, these do cancel. <coughs> these do cancel. And this becomes fourth root of x is 2. Now, what happened right here, the reason why that worked, the reason why that worked, the reason why that cancellation occurred, is that we did something that looked like this, the nth root of y to n. So if I just cover that up, it's like I'm covering up y, the fifth root of y to 5. So we did something like the nth root of y to n. So this is, in fact, equal to, equal to y some of the time. But it's not equal to y all of the time. So it's equal to y when n is odd. So apparently, it's equal to something else when what? When n is even. And my question to you is, is, OK, fifth exponent and fifth, uh, sorry, nth exponent and nth radical do not cancel when n is even. What does it become? And this will be like the 10th time we've said it this semester. Not y. It's not y. Absolute value of y. Okay. So the reason why this worked, so, so now that we have this written down, would someone carefully state why did, why did it work from here to here? Why did that happen? Because 5 is odd. They do not. They don't? Let's continue. Don't worry, we're going to do another one, and I hope that it either clears up the matter or, or entirely and completely muddies the waters. Okay, so then from here, now what? We want to get rid of this fourth radical, right? So how do we do that? Fourth power, both sides, right? So like this. So we're, in the end, we're trying to attack this fourth radical. And the way we're dealing with it is we're raising both sides to fourth power. So I'll do the right-hand side because that's easy enough. So that's 16. 
and I'll leave the left hand side alone for a moment. Okay, and I have a question for you. <coughs> Does this fourth radical followed by fourth exponent, do they cancel? And the answer is yes. And then I hope that you're saying, now wait a minute, you just got finished saying all this stuff about even and odd, and I can clearly see that four is even, and now I'm upset. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not happy with this. Okay, but I claim to you that in fact, these two situations are entirely different. What are entirely different about these? Yes, reversed. The order is different. The order is different. Notice what's happening here. So let me cover this up for a minute. This, is, this one is radical outside and exponent inside. This order, you have to carefully consider the parity of, of the exponent. Notice that, this, that, that that's different down here. Now it's radical inside, exponent outside. In this order, the parity does not matter. It does not matter. It is always, they always cancel. So from, so this is in fact x equal to 16. And what happens from here to here is that uh, the nth radical of y, and then you raise this to n, is always y. For any n. So could someone please tell me the distinction? But I, I said it, but I'd like for someone else to be adventurous and say it. What's the difference between these two? Hard to say it, okay? So, so this one, this one that I'm pointing to, this one the radical has to occur first, and then the exponent. This one, the exponent occurs first, and then the radical. So it has to do with the order. The order does matter. And there's, there's plenty of places in, in real life where order does not matter, right? So if you were to ask someone to put their to put their socks on, and you, you said, do it, and you, but I'm gonna turn around, okay? And then they do it, you turn around and you observe them. It's not possible to determine if they put their left sock on first or their right sock. It does not matter. But, pants and underwear are a different matter, right? <laughs> it's quite easy to tell what happened first. In one way, you're Clark Kent, and the other way, you're Superman. So let's do, let's do this again. Let's do a, an, a, an equation just like this again, except let's, let's make the orders all different. So what, did we, what exponent did we use last time? Five over four. So then let's do, how about x uh, plus seven? And then let's raise this to exponent uh, 4 over 5. And then let's say that that's equal to 81. I want you to solve. OK. What's the first thing that we always must do? Must must check the natural domain. Oh, by the way, on the previous, on the previous um, exercise, we need, to, we need to check this answer, by the way. So we, we concluded that x was 16. Now, first off, is that in the natural domain? Yeah. Yeah. It is. So natural domain, this is OK. And then does it satisfy the equation? So that means we need to plug 16 back into here. So what is 16 to exponent 5 over 4? It is 32. 
And how, for example, do you get your calculator to verify this? So how do you type this into your calculator? N not, well, not quite. So it'll be 16 and then caret 5 over 4. 16 caret 5 over 4. Uh, if you have a different calculator, it might be different. I'll be glad to help you figure it out uh, after class. So 16 and then caret 5 over 4. 32. So it's in the natural domain because it's bigger than 0? Because it's bigger than 0. OK, so now back, back to this one. So to consider the natural domain of this one, this equation, first off, there's nothing wrong with 81. 81 doesn't care about x. 81 is going to be 81. But this, we need to consider. Just what x's could we plug into the left-hand side? So in order to get that, we need to properly write down what is the radical definition of this expression. Uh huh. Very good. So, you, so the radical comes first, and then raise this to four. So now I have a question. What could you plug in to here? What x's would be okay? Any x. Could you plug in x is negative a million? Well, if you plugged in negative a million, then negative a million plus 7 would still be negative, right? I'm a little worried about that. Can you put negative arguments into this radical? Yeah. yeah. Why not? We just, we just got finished saying all these things about radicals and sadness and everything else. What? Ah, but this is an odd radical. Yeah. Right? So odd radical. So any x will suffice. OK. So what that means, to some degree, is that we can, we can proceed through the algebraic operations sort of with impunity, right? We don't need to worry too much about stepping out of the natural domain. So now let's perform the operations. OK. So we have this fifth root x plus 7 to 4 is equal to 81. And we want to get that x by itself. So what is it that we need to do first? Fourth radical, both sides. So the right-hand side is easy enough, so I'll do it myself. So what is the fourth root of 81, by the way? Three. Good. So then I'm just copying the left-hand side now. Because it's nice. OK, now, why did, why, did we do, why did we do fourth root of both sides? In the end, what was the, what was the, the motivation? to get rid of this 4, right? Yeah. So we got to have fourth radical of both sides to do that. So that was unavoidable. Now I have a question. We're doing fourth radical of both sides. Does that cancel that 4? Nope. Not exactly. Why not exactly? Because the parity is even, right? We have, we have fingernail to 4 followed by fourth radical. Okay, And this is the order in which it matters. So, so what happens to, to these? They turn into what? Absolute value now. So now it's absolute value of fifth root 
of x plus 7 is 3. Because what occurred here in this step is we used the same thing that we did last time, the nth root of y to n, and it's still just, it's still exactly the way it was before. It is y when n is odd, and it is absolute y when n is even. But on the previous exercise, when we were at that position, when we were at that position right here, what was in, in this exercise? In was 5, which is odd. What is in is in this exercise? 4, which is even. So that means that to proceed, when, when we went from here to here on the previous exercise, absolute value was not involved. But when we go from here to here on the current exercise, absolute value is involved. Okay? Lovely. And to your question that you asked originally, can you put the M inside? And the answer is, well, it depends on, it depends on the parities. So what I'm saying is always correct. And you can commute the orders when, uh, when, when the parities are right. Okay, so now we want to drop the absolute value. How do we get rid of the absolute value? So we have to ask ourselves, self, I'm covering up whatever's inside the absolute value. What could I be hiding Negative so that 3 would come out? Negative 3 would work. Positive 3 would work. So do you see that there's really two possibilities, two distinct possibilities. What I'm covering up must be negative 3 or positive 3. So from here, the, the operations split into two separate possibilities. One covering the possibility that what's inside the absolute value is negative 3, and the other co covering the possibility that what is inside the absolute value is positive 3. So now we split and say, well, one possibility is that what was in there was negative 3. And the other possibility is that what was in there positive 3. Okay. Now, just ignoring this one for a moment, how do we proceed past this? Fifth root of our fifth exponent of both signs. Right? So fifth. So this would be uh, so x plus seven, and then to five, and then negative three to five. <coughs> Okay, and then how do we proceed past this? Same, same story. So fifth root x plus 7 to 5 is 3 to 5. Okay, so now 3 to 5, that's 243. What's negative 3 to 5? Negative 243. Okay, so then this would be fifth root x plus 7 to 5 is negative 243 or fifth root x plus 7 to 5 is positive 243. Okay, so now why did we do why did we do both sides to fifth power? To get rid of the fifth radical. So did we really get rid of it or do they do they really cancel? Yes, why do they really cancel? 
That's not why. Because this is the order in which they always cancel. Okay? So I, I'm saying this not to be difficult. I mean, maybe it is, maybe, maybe you receive it as me being difficult. <laughs> and I, okay, that's fine. I'm, I, I'm not saying it to be difficult, but rather to make it clear to you. It would not matter if that was a six and that a six. It would cancel because in this order, they always cancel. It's the other order in which you have to worry about the parity. So this is x plus 7 is negative 243, or x plus 7 is 243. So how do we solve for x for this one? Subtract 7. So x is negative 250. And then same for the other one, uh, 236. Okay, so here we're saying that x must be one of these. Now, what we must do is we need to check. We need to check these. So in the first place, we need to check the natural domain. So are these both okay, just considering the natural domain? Yes. Right, because we said that the natural domain is any x. So we don't have any particular concern, for example, about this x being negative 250. That's fine. Okay, then we need to plug these back in to the original equation and check and see if they actually do solve the original equation. Okay. So if we plug negative 250 in, if we plug negative 250 in, we have to evaluate this expression. So negative 250 plus 7 is negative 243. So negative 243, and then we want to raise this to 4 fifths. So what is that? Well, let's see what the calculator says. So negative 2, 4, 3, and then caret 4 fifths. So who, want, so who thinks it's going to say 81? <laughs> the fact that I'm asking means that you probably believe it may not. So let's see what the calculator says. Ah, domain error. So this is where you have to stick to your guns and know your math. So the reason why the calculator is giving you a domain error actually is a shortcoming of the calculator. The calculator is mistaken here. The calculator is mistaken. So if we resort back to the actual definition of fractional exponent four-fifths, if we do radical first and then follow that with exponent, then the calculator will not crater. So I'll change this to one-fifth. So I changed it to one-fifth. Now what would the calculator say? It says negative three. And then if we raise negative three to exponent four, what would the calculator say? 81. So the calculator, the, the fact that it's cratering is only a shortcoming in this machine. Okay, but the math is still the math, and it's still correct. Okay. So yes, this is in fact 81, even though the calculator craters a little bit. And then the other one's even easier, two, because it's just 243 to 4 fifths. And your, cal your calculator can do this one without hesitating. OK. So any question about this example? So it's one of the pastimes of math instructors to come up with questions that your calculator has a low probability of being able to do. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Any questions about this? Some, some more modern calculators can do it. Okay, so another example. Uh, how about, how about, um,
3x to 3 fourths equal to x to 1 half. Okay, and the instruction is solve. So I'm gonna zoom through the, I'm gonna zoom through the part that we've already done twice, and I'm gonna come to the part that I wanna focus on. So in the first case, the thing that we always have to check is the natural domain. So x to 3 fourths is by definition the fourth root of x and then cube that. And x to 1 half is by definition what now? What is x to 1 half? Square root. OK. So according to this, according to just this alone, what's the natural domain? Right, non-negative x's. And how about according to this one? Same. Same, right, because it's an even radical. Okay, so according to either one of these alone, oops, uh, we need x to be greater or equal to zero. Okay? So now, let's perform our operations. So 3x to 3 fourths equal to x to 1 half. So now, there's lots of groups of students in here, but I'm going to focus on just two groups for a moment. So there's a group of students that really is just not sure at all how to proceed from here. That's fine. That's why we're here. Okay. There's another group of students that is quite sure what they want to do, but what they want to do is wrong. Okay. So I'm going to do something, and it's wrong. So I'm going to divide, I'm going to divide both sides by x to 1 half. So if, if it was your inclination to do this, then pay close attention that this is now the third time I've said that it's wrong. OK? So supposing we did this. Supposing we did this, what would the new right-hand side be? One. Be 1. And the new left-hand side, what would it be? So that 3 would be untouched. And then when you divide things of the same base, what do you do with the exponents? So when, yeah, you subtract exponents, right? Mm -hmm. So what's 3 fourths minus 1, minus one half? One fourth. So supposing that you even did this right. Supposing you even did that right. You divided both sides by x to half. I'd like for you to observe. Have a look at this equation. What would the left hand side be if you plugged in zero? It'd be zero. And the right hand side would be one. So if you plugged in zero, the, equ the equation would be 0 equal to 1. Is that true or is that false? That's false. And there's nothing unethical about that. But now please consider the original equation. What do you get if you plug, what do you, the left hand side, what do you get if you plug in 0? 0. And what do you get if you plug in the right hand side? 0. So if you plug 0 into the original equation, it's true. If you plug 0 into this equation, it's false. Do you see that whatever we just did cannot possibly be correct? Mm -hmm. So what, what error happened here? So we divided by something. Is it okay to divide equations by something? Could you divide equation, an equation by 3? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Could you divide an equation by negative 3? Yeah, that'd be fine too. Can you divide an equation by say, four-fifths? Yeah. Yes. What is the only thing you cannot divide an equation by? Exactly. Zero. Division by zero is not truth-preserving. We divided by x to one-half, mm -hmm. and we just established that x could be zero. Why did you break the universe here? Because you divided by zero. Okay.
You cannot do that. Okay? Now, you might, want, you might ask, I hope, okay, well, if not that, then what? And I'd also like to apologize if, if your former instructor taught you to divide both sides by x or whatever. So we're going to have to unlearn that, sorry. Uh, so the way, that you, the way that you handle this is you take all of the terms that have x and you put them on one side. So 3x to 3 fourths minus x to half equal to 0. Okay, so instead of that, we're going to jump to here, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to factor out a power of x. Now there are two choices. There's two choices. There's 3 fourths and there's 1 half. So that means that which of the ones do we want? Do we want to do something that look do we want to do something that looks like this? Or do we want to do something that looks like this? Which one of these? The first one. Why the first one? It's, it's nothing to do with easier. It's the lowest number? Yes. The criteria is always you select the, the least number. So between, between 3 fourths and 1 half, which is least? Half. So it's this, this is the one, and not this one. We're going to select this one, because half is less than 3 fourths. That's the criteria. So if the choices were negative 10 and negative 12, which one would you choose? Negative 12. Because negative 12 is less than negative 10. If the choices were 5 and 8, what would you choose? Five, because five is less than eight. So that being the case, what goes in those parentheses? So probably everyone agrees that this three will just hang out. And that minus will certainly be there. And then what needs to go right here? One, because that's what we factored out, right? And then what goes here? Well, the rule is, is that the new exponent that you get when you factor out something, the new exponent is the previous exponent. And then you subtract whatever you factored out. So we factored out half, so it would be factor out half, or subtract half, which is 3 fourths minus 1 half is 1 fourth. So 3x to 1 fourth minus 1 times x to 1 half. Okay, so 10 seconds left. So what do we need to do from here? So now what we have is we're in that same situation we've been in before. We have the product of things is 0. So it must be the case that the first thing is 0 or the second thing is 0. Yes, so, so the operation split now into two pieces. 3x to 1 fourth minus 1 is 0 or x to half is 0. And then you can solve these from here. Have a nice Monday.